Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 5th of November. Air quality in Indian capital improves as breeze clears some pollution. Protests demanding Pakistan Prime Minister's resignation enters fifth day. And President appoints new governors in all seven provinces of Nepal. And now for all the details. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi improved slightly on Tuesday as the wind picked up to blow away some of the pollution engulfing the city for days. The Prime Minister's office on Tuesday set up a panel to draw up plans to address air pollution in the capital and other city-specific issues. The air quality in Indian capital New Delhi and adjoining areas improved slightly on Tuesday as the wind picked up to blow away some of the pollution shrouding the city for days. Air quality index slightly improved from severe to very poor category in Delhi national capital region in the past 24 hours, bringing some relief to the people. The overall air quality index of Delhi docked at 381, which falls in the very poor category. The AQI between the range of 51 to 100 is considered as satisfactory, 101 to 200 is moderate, 201 to 300 falls under the category of poor, while 300 to 400 is considered as very poor, levels between 401 to 500 fall under the hazardous category. Locals complained of breathlessness and fatigue and urged the Delhi government to take requisite measures to combat the menace. The Delhi government वाहन थोड़े और कम करके साइकिल पे थोड़ा ज्यादा प्रयोग करना चाहिए हम भी साइकिलिंग करते हैं और क्या कहते हैं हमें इतना पोल्यूशन लगता है अगर ये कंट्रोल नहीं हुआ तो आने वाले टाइम में दिल्ली का क्या हाल होगा वो आप सब देख ही सकते हैं टॉक्सिक एयर इन द इंडियन कैपिटल हैज टेकन इट्स टोल ऑन टूरिज्म एज़ वेल एज़ टूरिस्ट कमिंग फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड फेल्ट द इंपैक्ट सर्टेनली व्हेन वी अराइव जस्टडे वी कुड टेस्ट इट एंड यू कुड सी इट बट टुडे दो इज सो मच डिफरेंट and we were apprehensive that it, it was going to affect us, but I think it's not going to now. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's office has set up a panel to draw up plans to address air pollution in the capital and other city-specific issues. The Supreme Court on Monday chided authorities for their failure to curb the pollution and asked the city government, its neighbouring provinces and the federal government to work together to help improve air quality. Delhi government has restricted the use of private cars until November 15th with an odd even system allowing cars to use roads on alternative days depending on whether the license plate ends in an odd or even number. India on Monday decided not to join the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership which would have been the world's largest trade pact on the grounds that the deal would hurt its farmers, businesses, workers and consumers. India on Monday decided not to join the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership or RCEP agreement on the grounds that the deal would hurt its farmers, businesses, workers and consumers. The agreement would have been the world's largest free trade. However, post RCEP summit in Thailand's capital Bangkok, India decided not to join the agreement owing to the unresolved issues between India and partner nations. The other 15 countries, excluding India involved in the deal, will go ahead with the process that will ensure a signed deal by 2020. Taking a firm stand, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserted that India will not become a part of the agreement until it gets a fair and balanced deal. At a press conference on Monday evening, India's foreign ministry said the move to drop out of the RCEP was correct. India conveyed its decision at the summit not to join the RCEP agreement. This reflects both our assessment of the current global situation as well as of the fairness and balance of the agreement. India had significant issues of core interest that remained unresolved.
Backed by China, the RCEP was poised to link half of the world's people and mark Beijing's dominance in Asian trade. Member nations, however, opened the door to India potentially joining them later if the issues it has with the deal are resolved. According to the Free Trade Agreement, the regulations for import and export of goods will be eased. Member states will have to reduce taxes and build an ecosystem conducive to trade. In is from Pakistan, thousands of protesters under the banner of Pakistan's Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazal Party continue their sit-in protest for the fifth day on Tuesday against the Pakistani government. They have been demanding resignation of Prime Minister Imran Khan, accusing him of rigging the 2018 general elections. The anti-government Azadi or Freedom March led by firebrand cleric come politician Molana Fazlur Rahman entered its fifth day in Pakistani capital Islamabad on Tuesday. Thousands of Islamist protesters have camped in the city since last Friday under the banner of Rahman's Jamiat Ulema Islam Fazl or JUIF demanding Prime Minister Imran Khan's resignation, accusing him of rigging the 2018 general elections with military support. Their other demands include re-elections in the country, no role of the army in the electoral process and supremacy of the constitution. The political strife comes as Imran Khan's government is struggling with the economy. Khan won the election last year on promises of breaking Pakistan away from its legacy of corruption and to create jobs for the poor. Prime Minister Khan has dismissed calls to step down. The Pakistani government had on Monday formed two different negotiating teams which have been trying to reach out to the JUIF to end the protest. An Afghan Foreign Ministry spokesperson has said that the US Taliban peace talks in Doha would not have faced a deadlock if the government have been engaged in the process. The spokesperson asserted that the government would have handled friction in the process caused by foreigners. Afghan Foreign Ministry spokesperson Gren Hawad has suggested that the peace talks with Taliban in Doha would not have faced a deadlock if the government had been engaged in the process. Hawad on Monday said if the Afghan government had a role in the Doha talks, it would have been able to continue the talks despite hurdles and handle friction in the process caused by foreigners. The U.S. Taliban talks in Doha, which continued for almost nine months, were called off by U.S. President Donald Trump in September following a Taliban claim bombing in Kabul. The two sides had appeared close to a deal to end the 18-year-long conflict, but the blast killed 12 people, including an American soldier, which prompted Trump to pull out. A week after the U.S. president declared the talks dead, the Taliban said their doors are open to resume peace talks in the future. But the group has continued to violence since then. In is from Nepal. Nepal's president, Bidya Devi Bhandari, has appointed new governors in all seven provinces of the country. According to a press release issued by President's office, new governors have been appointed on the recommendation of the cabinet. Bhandari had earlier relieved governors of all seven provinces on Sunday. They were appointed in January 2018 by the outgoing Nepali Congress government after first ever provincial elections in the Himalayan nation. Nepal adopted federalism after promulgation of new constitution in September 2015. Elections for seven provincial assemblies were held in two phases in 2017. Left Alliance had registered landslide victory in the historic elections. Nepali climber Nirmal Purja has shared that nobody believed in his plan when he first set an aim to climb the 14 highest peaks in the world. Purja became the world's fastest mountaineer by scaling all the 14 highest peaks in six months and six days. Nepali climber Nirmal Purja, who scaled the 14 highest peaks in six months and six days to become the world's fastest mountaineer, shares that nobody believed in his plan. 36-year-old Nirmal Purja reached the top of Mount Shisha Pangma at 8,027 meters in Tibet on 5th of November, the final frontier of his project possible campaign to climb all peaks above 8,000 meters in seven months. 
Purja, who previously worked with Britain's special forces and Royal Marines, said, when he first talked about his plan, everybody said it was beyond imagination. He said his accomplishment was based on dedication. When I first talked about this project, everybody say or thought it was impossible. It was beyond imagination, right? And this is saying as well, you are only limited by your imagination. That's so true. Project like this, I had never thought that I would be able to do it as well. But once I got that vision, I got the imagination and I had that confidence that I could do it, it's done. People said it, it was impossible, but it's possible, you know. So, yeah, it's, it's so uh, fascinating to see you know, what human body is, uh, is truly capable of doing. Purja began his record attempt in Nepal on Annapurna mountain, the 10th highest in the world which he scaled on the 23rd of April this year. He had a rotating support team made up of exclusively Nepalese climbers during the summit. He now joins a list of 40 climbers who have scaled the 14 highest peaks in the world. A special police officer's recruitment drive conducted in Poncha district of India, Shumu and Kashmir, saw the participation of over 200 female participants on Monday. They expressed their enthusiasm for serving the nation. Around 218 female candidates took part on Monday in an ongoing Special Police Officers or SPO's recruitment drive in Poonch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. During the first phase of the drive, the physical endurance of the participants was tested. Only the candidates who have passed the fitness test will be allowed to sit for a written test. The participants thanked the authorities for the initiative to provide employment opportunities to youngsters and express their enthusiasm for serving the nation. In our district, in 218 girls applied for the female candidates for the SPOs. And their first day was released today, the physical and industrial test. We are doing that. As you can see, the girls are standing here for the height. So accordingly, on the basis of their merit, the height and education qualification, the recruitment drive in Poonch had last week received an overwhelming response from male candidates as well, with more than 6,500 participating in it. Besides providing employment opportunities, such recruitment drives also build and cement faith of the youth in security forces. A group of Sikh pilgrims left for Pakistan via the Atari Vaga border to be part of the 550th birth anniversary celebrations of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. Visiting the Nankana Sahib Shrine in Pakistan, which is the birthplace of Guru Nanak, has been a tradition for Sikh devotees. A group of Sikh pilgrims from India on Tuesday departed for Nankana Sahib Shrine in Pakistan to celebrate the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. The pilgrims crossed over to Pakistan through the Atari Vaga border to take part in the large-scale celebrations at the Sikh shrine, which is the birthplace of Guru Nanak. Visiting the Nankana Sahib shrine in Pakistan has been a tradition for Sikh devotees. The devotees who visit Pakistan also pay obeisance at other shrines in the country, including Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib, the last resting place of Guru Nanak Dev. सरकारानु मतलब वीजा नहीं करना चाहिए लोकानु भेज ना चाहिए था इस तरह आपस में प्रेम भी बन रहा है आले सानु भी उन्होंने पता लग रहा है भाई उसे जिधर साढे गुरु तो हमें जो भी है साढे तो ऐसी उसे दर्शन करने जाने यहाँ बड़ी चाहों दी है लाइफ इसकी एक बार अपनी लाइफ भी अगर टाइम मिले तो which will enable visa-free entry of Indian pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan's Punjab province. The Pilgrim Corridor, which has been a long-standing wish of the Sikhs in India, is scheduled to be inaugurated on November 9th, ahead of the birth anniversary of Guru Nanak on November 12th. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsLink.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash asianewsline 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.